Thank you for tuning in to Music Marvels with the Chick with Beats and Breezy Gibson. I am music producer at Chick with Beats. And I'm entrepreneur Breezy Gibson. And we're back. Uh, you know, we do this every Saturday. Super huge shout out to our home stations, Grander Radio out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Sparks Radio based out of Denver, Colorado. And, you know, wherever you're listening to us from, we hope that you enjoy what we're getting ready to bring to you because, yeah, we got some stuff, man, between music industry news and, of course, Beats by Me, The Chick with Beats. And you want to tell them who's coming on to join us a little bit later? Oh, man, a, a man of many, many means. Man is very talented. Man is down to earth. He's really, really grounded. But you know what, man? His talents with the end of film industry and the movie making industry oh my god he's got a lot going on with that and uh you know folks folks pulling at him from every direction (laughs) so so you know some music folks pulling at him too so hey you know he's going to talk about his career and what's going on with that um in the filmmaking and uh other other close topics yes so yeah we're definitely excited for that and, uh, you know, without any further ado, I'm thinking maybe we should just go ahead and dive right on in. What do you think? Yeah, let's put our feet in it this time. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> with music industry news so first off the labels are asking tiktok for a share of the ad revenue um so they're working on some new deals the current one was okay but you know kind of looking at how people actually interact with music it makes sense to try to uh, renegotiate it to work a little bit differently so according to bloomberg the three majors which you know just in case you're not aware this warner music group sony music entertainment and universal music group but um, yeah, they're the ones that are in the negotiation deals right now. And so they're asking for a share of all the ad revenues that are generated from the platform. So back in July, uh, the companies that struck a buy, like buyout agreements with TikTok, 
So the platform just paid a lump sum to be able to use licensed music across the whole service. So this time they're saying instead, you know, the music is what's bringing people here. So why don't you give us a portion of the ads that are generated from that? So some people say right now they think that the only licensing TikTok has been doing are for less than 30 second videos, which technically some could view as promotion for monetized music on the streaming platform. So, you know, maybe you hear a little 15 second clip on somebody's video and then you go look for it on Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon or whatever. So, I mean, theoretically, that's true. But at the same time, you know, with TikTok having over a billion global monthly active users, I mean, it's growing off of the back of music. So it makes sense to share that with the artists. So, you know, we'll see what's going to come forward from that. Um, it would make sense for them to do it because Meta's already doing it. They've committed to a fixed portion of the ad revenues specifically for the rights holders. So hopefully Meta kind of started a trend that we can see across other platforms because, I mean, honestly, could you imagine scrolling, looking at TikToks and Reels or whatever with no music at all? That'd be kind of odd, wouldn't it? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like... Uh... <laughs> That's like ice cream with no sprinkles on top. <laughs> it's like plain, plain Jane, plain Jane. So no, they gotta have you gotta have some music flow. Got to. Absolutely. So it makes sense. And um, you know, looking at this particular story from a broader uh, spectrum, it's more like the industry is starting to realize exactly how important the music is. So you know, not just from a retail standpoint, but you know, people use music to shape uh, different factors from their everyday lives. So it's kind of like finally recognizing the actual value of it and asking to be properly compensated. So, you know, same thing out there to any artist listening. Once you know what you're worth, you're going to try to get it. So, you know, you got to recognize the the value of what you provide, right? Well, you know, that's that's you know different different direction, but similar to uh, how women feel about their hair. Okay, so I'm I'm saying that in a great, uh, a positive light. I mean, women like their hair to look a certain way. So when we do videos, it's like to hear some accompanying music. I mean, I can pull out you know 42 different other analogies uh, same way. You know, uh, 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 a man. Uh, feels better when he's when uh, he's, his beard looks better you know or <laughs> haircut barbershop you see what I'm saying so um video with no music nah. <laughs> okay so I mean it's it's just that cut and dry yeah. and so I mean what else would you do you know put put uh, um, animation on there for people to see you know no they you gotta hear something or you it makes it more attractive when you hear something <laughs> mm, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very interesting analogy I, I, I see what you did there <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. so that 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 whole entertainment realm hey we're you know the music industry that's entertainment it is okay i mean you know hey uh, um the sports industry same thing when they show hot just about every network whether they be local or global when they show highlights whether it's the hockey game basketball football baseball soccer whatever what when they show those highlights they got music <laughs> yeah whether it be on the tv news or on a sports show or whatever the instant so this is all entertainment so that's right. gonna be part of even with uh, podcasts and radio shows you know they've got the music beds playing underneath because you know music is is vital and so once you recognize that i mean yeah you you might be doing it for the love it's because it's something that you enjoy but you know you're actually providing a service to people and why not get paid for that so yeah, I'm in full support of the labels and other artists being able to get a percentage of the ad revenue because, you know, to be quite honest, us as musicians, you know, we're, we're making it look pretty. We're making it more attractive, as you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that that first rapper 
and I can allude to this that first rapper when he coined that phrase and you know what I'm about to say he coined that phrase turn it up in my headphones mm-hmm. there you go <laughs> see that was like a, 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 a precursor to all of this yeah. because he couldn't do his thing without hearing that music better for him to kick his flow with and you know that transcends to a whole lot of, of, of industries turn mm-hmm. that music up. yeah well, there you go yep and uh you know speaking of which youtube music and premium have now surpassed 80 million paid subscribers so 80 million people are using youtube music and premium so you know just in case you're not aware because you know google's kind of done a lot of different steps or should i say alphabet the parent company has kind of done a lot of different steps with what they're offering over the past few years but youtube music is available as a standalone platform or you can get it bundled into youtube premium subscription so that 80 million uh, figure actually includes trialists so people may or may not stick with it but it's a 30 million increase from the last subscriber figure that they shared with us 13 months ago. So that means that uh, YouTube Premium and YouTube Music have added about 2.3 million subscribers every month since September of last year. So that's tremendous growth. I mean, that's just kind of showing you where people are. So people have been paying to get rid of the advertisements. And so there, that means it's higher money, more money actually going to the creators. So just for some comparison, if you kind of want to know what's happening with the others in the sector, Spotify added 7 million premium subscribers to their user base in the quarter. And so now their global paying audience is 195 million. Apple Music surpassed 60 million subscribers back in June of 2019, but we haven't heard any more numbers from them since then. But still... A substantial amount and so two months ago we shared with you right here that youtube had paid rights holders for music over six billion dollars in the last 12 months that ended in june of 22 so that's double the three billion that it did back in 2019 so the growth was quote unquote attributed to twin engine of ads and subscriptions so just to make sure that we're being clear on this because you know sometimes the jargon can get kind of boggled down here but every time somebody uses youtube they're either using the free version that they're not paying for which means that they have to watch advertisements in order to use it or they're paying directly to bypass the ads but both of those are growing and that's why they've been able to pay out so much and you know hopefully that continues on that route but it's kind of interesting to see how all these markets are growing, that means that there are more people that are adopting uh, the way to listen to music as you know, being some of these major platforms. So with it being so much room for growth, you know, maybe we'll see if it continues that way or maybe we're kind of reaching the peak. You know, we'll keep an eye on it and definitely make sure that we keep you posted as we get more information. But those figures are definitely something to pay attention to. And it also kind of lets you know where you need to put your energy and your efforts. Because if that many people are using these platforms, you need to make sure that your music is there so you have a better chance of being heard. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this makes about the third or fourth time that I know I've come from this direction, you know, years and years and years ago when they talked about, I first heard about subscriptions, subscribe to this, subscribe. Okay, and that was in a total different realm, you know, in the business side. Okay, but if you, if again, if you think about this, you know, your whether it's your electricity bill or you know whatever you got, gas, uh, along those lines, when you're paying somebody to use that entity, that service whatever it might be for a 30 day period or whatever okay so i'm just saying trickling trickle down all the way to the the young man or young lady on the street you know whether you're a singer whether you're a carpenter whether you're a beat maker no matter what you are if you've got a way to to create a talent and you know that people want to partake of that talent and you 
uh, hey, instead of going for that one hit wonder, arrange yourself a subscription where they're paying you monthly. Okay, and that's just income. And I'm I'm talking about the low man down, the low man and the low lady down on street level. Subscriptions, oh my gosh. I mean, that's that's just that's just bona fide income for you to pour right back into your craft. Mm-hmm. So, so hey. But you gotta you do, do the work if you're gonna do it. So that means yeah. you gotta make sure that you have consistent product coming out. Um, Because that's one thing that some people have gotten kind of tripped up, especially, you know, we've been seeing a lot of that on Instagram with a lot of creators deciding to offer, uh, you know, subscription services. But then you do it and then a lot of them don't have anything. So if people subscribe to something and you're not delivering the content, then guess what's going to happen? So, yeah, on the flip side of that, yes, 100 percent. It's an opportunity there, but you have to have the content there already ready to go and you have to be consistent with it in order to keep it up. Well said. Mm -hmm. So, all right. And uh, Warner Music has launched a new emerging markets record label called Out of Order. And so they're going to be releasing music from developing and established artists in the Middle East, the Eastern Mediterranean. Africa, Southeastern Europe, and uh, Warner's head of marketing is going to be heading that up for everyone. She's based out of, excuse me, her name is Selena Childhurry, and uh, she's worked with Atlantic Records based out of NYC, and the label's going to release a series of albums featuring 10 original unreleased and dance-leaning records. And they're also going to run an online radio show that's inspired by a track from one of the albums. So the mixes are going to be live on Audio Mac, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And the album artwork and creative space will all uh, showcase work from up and coming local designers in the same region that the music is curated from. So, I mean, this is really a holistic, you know, 360 approach that they're doing here, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, with that being said, you know, how you just said, you know, trickle down uh, to us ordinary people on the street. That's a great opportunity, a great example of how you can kind of get your region going and buzzing with some topics if you all work together. So, you know, not just having the artists, but, you know, making sure the graphic designers do the cover artwork, um, the local music video directors are having a hand in it. But just kind of building a sense of community uh, can bring more exposure to each of those regions. And hey, why not do the same thing with your neighborhood or wherever you're from, right? That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So Universal has partnered with Snoop Dogg's newly formed Death Row Pictures for a biopic. And uh, so Alan Hughes is going to direct it. This is going to be the first one that we'll get for, about Snoop. And so it'll be kind of interesting to check out. Um, It's going to be the first definitive biopic, as he says, and um, it's going to incorporate music from his catalog. So it's a great thing that he owns all that stuff now. So, uh, yeah, it's not like there will be a hold up in getting any of that in the film itself. So Universal was behind uh, the Oscar nominated Stray Outta Compton biopic, which broke box office records for a musical biopic, grossing more than two hundred million dollars. And the director, Alan Hughes, just in case you're not aware, his credits include The Defiant Ones, which had profiled the rise of Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine, and uh, of course, the legendary hood classic, Menace to Society. And uh, right now, he's directing and executive producing Dear Mama, which is the first definitive and comprehensive five-part documentary series on Tupac and his mother, uh, Afini Shakur. And he's got the full cooperation of the Shakur estate. And so he's got access to everything, all the music, all the poetry. So uh, he's he's been doing some some pretty heavy lifting and extensive work in the music realm lately. And uh, writer Joe Robert Cole uh, is working on this. And just in case you're not aware, he co-wrote uh, the Black Panther movies along with Ryan Coogler. So, of course, we know how well um, those have done and are doing currently. 
So this is going to be a really, really exciting trio of people working on this. So, you know, hopefully this will be something that we'll all love and enjoy. And Snoop said, and this is in quotes, I waited a long time to put this project together because I wanted to choose the right director, the perfect writer, and the greatest movie company I could partner with that could understand the legacy that I'm trying to portray on screen and the memory I'm trying to leave behind. So, I mean, just to think that statement is pretty powerful because he said, you know, technically he'd rather just wait until it could be done right. So once everything fell into place, they're ready to hit go. And yeah, with that powerhouse right there, this should definitely be something to see. And I'm kind of excited to see how packed the movie theaters are going to be once that actually comes out. But um, yeah, there's something to be said and taking your time to make sure that it can be done the right way, wouldn't you say? I would agree. Most definitely. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, we've talked about this a few times on here, but Pink Floyd is wanting to sell their catalog for $500 million. It hasn't happened yet, so what's going on? Well, if you take a look at some of the particulars, you can kind of see why it's just been hanging in the balance. So they've been trying to sell the music catalog all year, and we're in November already. Can you believe it? But um, yeah, it just hasn't gone well for them. So... You know, we've been seeing, we've been sharing with you all the legendary acts that have been closing deals for record amounts of money. And they don't have, a lot of them don't have the roster of albums that Pink Floyd has. So, you know, it's kind of mind mind boggling, you know, when you first look at it, because initially the bids top $500 million. So people were already willing to pay more than that, but they kept thinking they could get a little bit more and kind of held out. So now... The list of potential bidders just keeps shrinking along with the actual estimated value of the catalog. So a lot of people are saying, hey, we don't think this is actually worth 500 million anymore. So, you know, of course, likely explanation, they may have asked for a bit too much money, probably should have closed on one of those bids at the time that they had it. But potential buyers had been finding out more information about the actual details of the assets that they were selling. And check this out. The band was actually selling the recordings and the rights to use its name, image, and likeness, but not selling the publishing catalog, which is what you need (laughs) for the rights to be able to license the song for like commercials and movies and whatnot. So part of the deal was that the band would pre-approve the uses in many cases, but you still had to check with them first. And for a lot of investors, that's a problem because if Pink Floyd has to approve them using it and they're well known for not agreeing on things. So it's really, really a tricky thing for an investor to try to navigate that because what are you actually buying if you still have to ask every time you try to get something licensed? So, you know, I know I was kind of floored when I heard more of the details because you assume that publishing would be included in that as it is with most of the deals. But can you imagine? So, you know, you're working behind the scenes, you're getting these tracks put and stuff, but every time you have to wait for every member to agree on whether or not it's going to be okay, what are you paying the money up front for then? You know, I mean, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Well, it sounds like something straight out of the sports world. Mm. This is the first go round for something like this. So, uh, you know, there's the phrase study long, study wrong. Oh, yeah. They, they, they took, <laughs> so when the offers were there, they, they didn't move on them. And now, you know, hey, like yeah. you say, almost a year later, stuff is, 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 is falling through the cracks now. So, yeah. Because. Yeah, let me like it or not, we're heading into a recession. I know it kind of feels like we're already there, but we're actually not where we're going yet. And so a lot of other music companies are kind of seeing this happening. So like BMI, for instance, they weren't able to sell like they wanted to. So we, I think Concord was another one that we've shared with you. So a lot of people are getting kind of... Um, Uh, bearish you know they say bear versus bull so they're starting to think that as 
these values of things are dropping across every sector. Music is no exception. Yeah, it's, it's man, they really, really <laughs> should have taken advantage of the chance when they had it. Yeah, because we're starting to see some of these slowing down a bit. And, you know, hey, word to the wise, if you're an artist out there, there are going to be some lulls across every single industry. Music's no different. Make sure that you're in a position to where you can still have content coming out. But, you know, this touring is getting a little bit trickier for a lot of people because of the increased costs. Now's the time to start kind of checking out some of the um, online concerts and things that we saw during the pandemic to be able to still uh, make money, make some revenue and generate some revenue from what you're doing. But in a way that will cost you a little bit less to get your music out there. <laughs> when they put that product in that hot skillet, do you want the product right then when it's hot? Or do you want it later on after it's mm -hmm. faded it out and, you know, you, hey, when it's hot and most appetizing, hey, you want it right then. Yeah. So sit back twiddling your thumbs one more, as we've seen happen before. Yeah. That it loses its zest, it loses the gusto. The zest drops. Yeah. And, uh, Nobody Maybe wants cold fries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're, there's a lesson to be learned in this from all aspects. But yeah, there's there's been a downturn in in the industry like all the others, and so yeah, just something to be aware of. You got opportunities. You can't hesitate right now. <laughs> you really can't. Right. Yeah. All right. And uh, the final news story for this week Megan the Stallion was granted a restraining order against uh, the former label of 1501 ahead of the AMA Awards tomorrow. Uh, her and her distributor were actually granted that because they claimed that the label was unlawfully taking steps to block or interfere with her exploiting, licensing, or publishing her music, which she needs to be able to do for the AMAs. So she was able to show up in court and have all the proof that she needed to prove what they were doing, and a judge granted it, so she'll still be able to uh, capitalize on everything that's associated with the award show tomorrow. So, you know, heads up, sometimes there'll be people in your path trying to keep you from doing great, but hey, Sis is fighting with all her might to make sure that they don't mess up her bag and kudos to her for that. Yeah, big kudos. <laughs> Royal kudos. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a quick pause for the cause and then we'll be back with our special guests right after this. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> profile to see a live demo of how this can help you get more customers and make more money. 
Hey, this is a chick with beats. I am a multi-genre music producer and strategist to indie artists and labels. Visit my website, thechickwithbeats.com, for resources for artists and instrumentals available in various genres for songs, vlogs, blogs, podcasts, themes, TV, film, commercials, and more. Once again, that's thechickwithbeats.com, A-C-H-I-C-K-W-I-T-B-E-A-T-Z. Let's make something happen. Well, ladies and gentlemen across the world, We've come to another point right here, and I am ecstatic. Uh, Our whole staff is ecstatic because we're about to introduce a young man who is blazing a very, very specific trail on Earth these days, uh, spreading a lot of positivity. He's spreading a lot of talent, that's for sure. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, the words you're about to hear from this gentleman are going to bring a lot of intrinsic value to you and yours so without any further ado let's bring right here to the stage the one and only mad the mad scientist right here on the stage with us mr are you with us (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm over here i'm very tickled man because it's like you know it's it's seeing god like unfold before you and and that's like such a delight and gift and blessing so thank you for the warm welcome and awesome uh introduction you know um i'm grateful to be here uh and you know share my story and some some great energy with you and your fan base and all the listeners so thank you for having me okay okay and so i i actually said mr mad but I left off a very important word with that, the Mr. Mad Scientist. Okay? <laughs> so now that scientist word, now that really is a is an impactful word. So can you share with our listeners you know, who is the Mad Scientist? Um, where did you come from? And <laughs> some of the great things that you represent on Earth today. Okay, so um, Mad Scientist, um, um, I am he. And um, my name is, my former name is Carl Cockney Jr. I'm originally out of Brooklyn, New York, um, you know, by way of great family, great energy. Um, the, the, the name Mad Scientist came at a pivotal point in my life when, um, you know, I was challenged with trying to find something new to do with my life, you know, pen, you know uh, coming from a bad car accident. And so I had to reinvent myself. And in short, you know, my background is of art, painting and drawing things of that nature. And so um, because of a bad car accident, I wasn't able to be as mobile as I needed to be, um, you know. And um, so I had to meditate. And then God reminded me of the gifts he blessed me with. And um, also couple of my interests for movies and storytelling. And um, you know, again, in short, he said that, you know, the experiences I have, how he's going to prepare me, he's going to allow me to use my gifts to come together and to share his love, his light, and, you know, create a path, a path for myself and a path that others could be inspired in, you know, um, via his love and light. So in short, that's that's kind of like how it all came together to uh, the mad scientist. And, um, you know, what I do currently is um, uh, director, producer of short films, feature films, commercials, documentaries, things of that nature. So, yeah. Mm, that, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Chick with Beats, I know you got questions right off the bat. <laughs> I do, I do. I was trying to be nice and like let you have the first one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first thing that came to mind when you were speaking, you know, um, having gone through that and then kind of gravitating to your love for movies, what would you say inspired you to go ahead and uh, kind of step into that wholeheartedly? Um, like I said, I was in a place I was seeking and searching. And then, you know, when you're in that place, you're looking for a place of, you know, familiarity and um, something that connects with you and makes sense, 
you know, more so on a purposeful level. Mm. And um, I just recall, you know, uh, you know, watching TV and being inspired by storytelling, whether through cartoons or, or you know, films, you know, coming up in the 80s, um, you know, they had a lot of social uh, type movies, you know, and, um, you know, during that time frame, you know, we were more hands on us as a community we or finding our power, you know, we were finding our place in the world. And, you know, it just brings me back to that. And because of that, I saw the power, the influence. And, um, you know, fast forward to these times, I see how that was influencing our youth and our people around now. And so I thought, you know, again, in my meditation with God, that this would be a great um, opportunity to, you know, look at life from a different perspective, from a natural you know, um, aspect. He said, our gifts will make way. So all these avenues, just the things that I put into this pot to say, you know, yes, I want to heal, but I want people to feel this love that I feel that God has given me right now and the empowerment and things of that nature. And I know film videos are so influential. Um, I had to take that journey. You know, everything is self-taught for me. And, um, I said, well, this would be a good opportunity for me to implement some things to, into the industry that can, you know, foster change and differences in my life and lives of people around me. So, Absolutely. So, like, was it a specific film or TV show or ones in uh, particular? I mean, I, you know, I, I come from the day of watching Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, ah. Bill Cosby, you know, they, you know, a lot of wholesome you know, shows that were fun and, you know, um, it just gave you an energy of like how we interact with each other, how powerful and influential that is. So I can't say it was any one particular, um, even movies like The Breakfast Club, mm. you know, um, that, that was one of my favorite, but um, just to see how they did that movie and were able to help people heal and communicate with one another. It was just magical, you know, and I'm like, man, what other platform or place to have to be able to express yourself in all these manners? Because music ties into it. You know, of course, the acting, there's the dialogue. So there's so many different canvases to, you know, change the dynamics of the world. You know, world plants the seed that, oh, everything is bad, war's going on here, and there. you know. Yes, these things might be happening, but we're, we're still the catalyst of making change happen. So, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, wow, that's really impactful. And, you know, you raise a really good point, because one thing that comes to mind is um, during the pandemic, you know, when everybody was quarantining, that's the first thing people did. They gravitated towards the art, whether it was new music, new TV shows, like people needed that comfort. And it's such a good thing that it was there, you know? So yeah, you have a really, really good point there. Yes, you know, sometimes we, society distracts us, you know, make us feel like we're so far from, you know, having anything to do with, you know, um, life and how we impact each other's life. And I'm just trying to reverse that, you know, allowing God to use me as he pleased to, you know, mm -hmm. get like what, what he called us to do. <laughs> That's well, 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 how did the actual metamorphosis take place? Um, did you have a, uh, like a, a regular 35 millimeter camera or, you know, just... Uh did somebody put a, a video camera in your hands or just how did that metamorphosis place to where you are right now? Um, yes, someone someone put a uh, video camera in my hand, but even prior to that, um, I had interest, you know, some interest in photography. Um, when I was younger, mother had a great friend that would show me some things about the camera, you know, taking pictures. And pictures is like the first aspect to film you know um but then um i had a friend he had a, a camera he actually blessed me with it 
because he was able to get some equipment. You know, he was pursuing, you know, uh, his interest in film and, you know, in some aspects of piggyback and others because he had a different interest in a different type of film. You know, I just took what I had and I, you know, self-taught YouTube University. <laughs> you know, it was my, fa- my favorite thing to go to. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now, I hear you, there's, a, there's a, wor- a specific word you're using that is a little bit to the different side, and that's film. I'm hearing you, you've mentioned that two or three times already. So now, can you educate the listeners the difference between what video is or what film is? Or I mean, that whole genre of, of film, the film industry, now, that's, that's a whole different cut, right? Now, it, 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 it is, and, you know, because of technology and the changes and, you know, how it crosses a variety of mediums, um, yeah, I, I use film more so because um, it's, it's more, for me, it's more of a study. Like, you have a particular... Um, destinations or something that you're pursuing particular with interest that um, you know requires some study and requires some deeper research you know you could pull a camera out and just record and you know that's video you know but when you pull a camera out with the intent to teach or lead or inform you know it's more of um, a formal address to you know what i'm saying the, the industry mm-hmm. um that's why i use film in, in in the most aspect of it because that was my desire to go towards it even though all these different aspects of it you know kind of like led to it you know because i started off doing music videos um you know i'm not gonna lie you know some of the you know the, the content and stuff didn't vibe right with me and you know, I prayed about it, and a friend of mine said, you know, sometimes you just got to see what God is doing, and, you know, you don't have to feel, you know, taken by it, you know. So um, it made sense to me because it allowed me to, to grow my experiences with people, um, communicate, you know, share the word, you know, just everything that's necessary for you know that the, the elements, you know, as what I was explaining earlier, how influential it, how influential it is. So, when I was let's speak to some of these artists, they just really want to express themselves, mm-hmm. and the opportunity to explain to them that they can do it, they can express themselves. Yes, but you know, I showed them some importance of how this can influence people in different aspects now if you're coming from a teaching place of saying i came from here to there that's good but if you're going to glorify some things then Mm. you know understand what you're putting out there you know and you know what comes back in return so you know all these were working um parts um leading up to specifically my interest in film you know um, which is with storytelling and those elements involved. Mm. <laughs> wow. Now, that's, a, that's an impactful answer. Go yeah. ahead, Chick. Okay, so you had said something earlier about how you worked with visual arts, not to get too far off topic, but um, then you kept using the word elements. And mm-hmm. you know, with you being from Brooklyn, I gotta <laughs> ask, <laughs> were you ever a graph artist, you know, back in the day? Um a uh, graffiti artist? Yeah. Yeah, um <clears throat> Um that 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 is part of you know the journey. Um I did have a little black book. Some of my friends, you know, did get their spray cans and you know, did their things on the train yard and you know the Brooklyn bridges and things of that nature, but you know I I, I wasn't that brave. You know <laughs> <laughs> some of the stories and you know Beat Street and breaking, you know all those things. I'm like, yeah, I, I love the art, but I don't know if I want to be fighting nobody over no 
you know, yeah. drawing up. <laughs> so I, I kept my art in the books. Um, I had a lot of other creative friends as well too, and uh, I admired their artwork. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's it goes back to what I was saying is, you know, we create that type of environment. There's so much to be built. And, um, you know, I want to use this opportunity to bring that back to the forefront because we are gifts, you know, to one another. And we, all, like I mentioned to you earlier, we all have that gift in us. We all can create. We're created by the most awesome energy ever, source ever. Mm-hmm. And why, you know, shouldn't we be able to have access and tap into these deeper, greater things? So, you know, I just want to reverse some things society has done and numbing some of our people and making them feel like they don't have anything inside of them and everything they're seeking, they have to constantly always seek outside themselves, you know. So I want to use my my story, others, to bridge those gaps. Mm, man, <laughs> everything you just said was phenomenal. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, and I, I, I can see right now a chick with bees. Guess what? From what the mad scientist is 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 uh, involving us with with this conversation. This is just the start. We we already know. You know, we're gonna have to have you back not just once but several times. Yeah, you know, because I know, what, I know. I have so much. To- <laughs> Go ahead. No, no. I was gonna say I, I have so much to share and and. You know, I know we're limited in time, but, you know, uh, 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 this is definitely going to be a home for me. You know, that's how mm-hmm. I look at it. <laughs> part- wow. Partnership. Okay. Okay. So, now, you know, yeah, time is a factor, but share with our listeners, you know, maybe the first real project that you feel was your quality, you know, in a nutshell, share that experience from getting that up and running and to actually being behind the cameras to, to to make that film. What was that like? Um it was exciting. Um lo- lost sleep, you know, um the dreams don't stop, you know, and it's like this kinetic energy of just great feeling and it only multiplies and it could be so it could it could multiply so much that it could be disabling <laughs> in, a, in a good way uh, you want yeah, yeah. so much with the opportunity you have now and you know you your mind is open up even more but it, it was exciting um it, w- it was a, a learning curve as well because you know like i said i, I put all these concepts together and the idea of what you know filmmaking is along with some study and things of nature and, you know, putting the concepts together, some hands-on is different than actually coming to that moment. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, it was even more learning for me to embrace, even more experiences to have real time, you know. Um, and it was, it was lovely, um, very good, came out um, pretty good, better than what the client thought or expected um there were some challenges but i embraced those as well you know with the elevation and the growing you know sometimes people forget about the things that we have to adapt on our way to you know our greatness or our call and our purposes and all these things are part of it you know and what makes it even better so i embrace it you know it was like it all gelled it was all one great experience so yeah uh, well a, ch- a chick with bees i know you got a question go ahead because i got <laughs> one but go ahead with <laughs> well yeah i do i'm looking at the clock but yeah the thing is just kind of burning in my mind so you know we do our music industry news and there's been lots of talks about you know different uh, music documentaries coming up different uh, biopics coming up and um, just want to know if you have like any word of advice for any artists that might be listening 
that are thinking that maybe they've got a story that they want to share? Do you have any input to offer them before they would get in touch with someone like you or, you know, try to delve into to that aspect of it? Yeah. Um, you know, God makes no mistakes, first of all. Um, and, you know, to first stay in that place, in that zone, fully, faithfully, mm-hmm. right? Because things will happen along the way that would discourage us, discourage us or distract us. Um, but I, I urge and I will share and express to, you know, any artist, any creative, the, the things that we experience and go through are the gems that others need to hear. So don't feel shame, don't feel no fear, don't feel any apprehension to what God is doing in your life and how that will impact somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing I spoke with, with Breezy before is, you know, on social media, Facebook, you know, I was expressive of a lot of things I went through in my life. And, you know, some people felt like it was being too open and sharing too much. And, you know, that's an issue because back in the days, stronger communities were built off of just being transparency and sharing each other's experiences. So once we shut that off, we shut off our lifeline to one another. Mm. So I will encourage any creative, any musical artist, you know, to stick with your story. Know that your particular journey and walk was part of the, the plan and it's connected to friends and healing so many other people. So if you omit that or if you take that out or try to hide it or whatever the case is, then you may be blocking your own blessings and the blessings of others, you know? And, you know, for me, that's kind of how I look at it. You know, everything is, is love. God, this for me, this is one big love story. Mm. And mm. You know, allowing others to grow and evolve is very powerful and impactful. Like it builds unity, like you, like people probably don't even understand. So. Absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm-hmm. You are. Wow. Okay. So now, now as the clock is, is staring us blatantly in the face, you know, can you give some addresses of media places where people can follow you, our listeners can follow you and, and, and keep up with, um, you know, the, your, your work and, and, and see up close and personal, where would they go to, how do they follow you? Um, so, um, on Facebook is, um, mad scientist. Um, I think my hand will be the only antidote mm. <laughs> and that came about cause you know, um, I was always saying love is the only antidote. So, um, but it's mad scientists on Facebook on IG. It's the only mad scientists. Um, everything spelled out phonetically correct. Um, and, uh, website is, uh, mad scientist productions.com, uh, scientists with a S productions with a S.com. I am in the middle of, um, shortening that. Um, so the new website will be just in case in the transition of everything. Um, the new website will be MSP media arts.com and only so, um, and make it easier for people to remember to click on and you know kind of like you know uh for lack of better words roll off the tongue a little bit shorter and quicker <laughs> <laughs> wow. man you or sir you have come through here <laughs> and you have really spread some some great information you know you've got a, a an impactful story and and so we've got to we've got to roll the red carpet out and open the door for you to come back uh, mm-hmm. when you can, you know, yeah. and, and and speak a little bit more, educate us more. Yeah, um, definitely. Like I said, I'm 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 honored. I'm humbled. You know, um, God told me prepare, and you know that's another thing I want to say. You know, to the listeners and anyone creating and seeking and it doesn't just have to be an art it could be anything that you're seeking you know just stay the course you know the doctor 
your your story on the way to becoming a doctor will impact and help someone else to do that. So this is not just, you know, surrounded just to this particular occupation or, you know, creativity or platform. You know, this general, you know, this love, good heart, and, you know, know that you are significant in this whole journey, each of mm-hmm. us are. So, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back more. I'm looking forward to being family on this platform. Cause I love what you, you all are doing. The energy is like amazing. And um, it's a blessing, a huge blessing. When God said, be prepared, I thought, you know, this was one of the, the, the significant aspects of preparing he was, you know, speaking of. So I'm grateful. Oh, well, sir, the one, the mad scientist. <laughs> and then he said that other, the website is, oh, oh my, oh my gosh. M- I, I'm, MSP Arts, uh, MS, excuse me, MSP Media Arts.com. Um, media Arts, Arts with an S at the end, dot com. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's been really, really royal. It went by so fast. Yes, the door open. We roll in the red carpet out. Come back and educate us as well as our listeners even more. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule mm-hmm. to join with us and educate folks. And so a chick would be, so I'm going to turn back over to you so you can do what you do. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Well, once again, just, you know, tremendous thanks to you for coming on and sharing your story and your wisdom with us and yeah we can't wait to have you back i already have uh, some questions i'd like to start off with next time you know so we can dive a little bit deeper in the art of storytelling so yeah just thank you so much and yeah i can't wait to do this with you again thank you a chick with beats like um and busy busy expressed to me about you as well too so you know uh, i look forward to to connect them all building more um, you told me you have a, a, I guess, an audio background, engineering, musical background, mm-hmm. and uh, all of that's impactful. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't make an awesome film or convey a message with some good harmony because that carries a lot of energy. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard him right here. The only mad scientist right here. And uh, we can't wait for you to come back. So keep doing what you're doing. And we're, we're, we're locking in to hear more from you in the not too distant future. Yes. Thank you for everything you both are doing. I appreciate you. And uh, blessed day to every, all the listeners and all the creatives out there. Stay encouraged. Stay in love. I love you. God loves you. And great blessings to you all. All right. And that does it for this week's edition of Music Marvels with the Chickle Beats and Breezy Gibson. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. We really, really appreciate your support. We appreciate you sharing us with your friends. We appreciate the love that you've been showing on social media. I mean, we can't thank you enough for what you do. Um, super huge shout out once again to our home stations, Grander Radio out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Sparks Radio out of Denver, Colorado. And, you know, it's just been a fabulous time and I can't wait to do it again. What do you think? Oh, man. You know, it's on and popping. You know, it's a place to be. Yeah. We're in the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't wait. You know, we got to keep the train, the train's got to keep pulling out the, the, uh, the, the train station you yeah. know, so we carrying folks with us <laughs> so no empty trains leaving here not at all yeah. no no empty no empty airplanes leaving here either <laughs> so they're coming out they're taking off full yes and they're coming in hot <laughs> <laughs> yes and um you know, especially as we're looking at the the close of 2022 coming up quickly you know, if there's special topics or whatever that you want us to cover, um, you know, to make sure that you're ready for 2023, reach out to us, let us know, and uh, we'll see what we can do to make sure that we can help you out and get you the information that you need to come into 2023 strong. Um, so, yeah, definitely reach out and let us know. 
Oh man, we got some we got some stuff for you. Come, <laughs> we got some real stuff for you. Come, I can't say too much right now, but we got some real stuff coming for you in the 2023. Some of it might crank before it gets before the 2023 gets here. Hey. So keep it. Up. <laughs> yeah. So all right, till next time, you know where to find us. Tune in, tell a friend, and we'll see you then. Peace. Peace.